Hello everyone, my name is Pixelriffs, and welcome back to the Skyblock Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Yes, we are back. We're back in the Skyblock world. I know it's been a little while, been focusing on some other things, and now I'm back in the Skyblock world to give you a couple of updates and to work on a brand new project. First of all, the updates. Let's talk about the Sky Hike Help Farm. I have some very good news about this because after running the kelp farm last time we did notice that a couple of those yet you can still kind of see it on that last piece of kelp there in the row a couple of these did not make it to the height i was hoping them to in fact they'd sort of die off at a certain point you know roughly halfway up the way the farm is right now however a couple of the others that I broke and started growing again from scratch have done pretty well. You can see a few there that have not yet reached the height of that one, but are getting there and have not stopped growing yet. And this one over here on the left-hand side, this is my absolute champion. This one is now growing up very, very tall to the point where I think it is actually going to be taller now than it is possible for kelp to grow naturally in the wild. And let's take a look at the age of this topmost block. 23 okay so it looks like 24 25 that one will max out its age around there but i think i might just pop in here and give it a quick tap there we go and that is back at age five so we might end up seeing that one grow even taller with a little bit of manual assistance there i want to see that thing outgrow this farm and see if we can build up the farm even larger in future episodes but i haven't had much time to grind off camera so i haven't done any more progress building up that farm it is kind of resource intensive today we are going to work on a completely different type of farm that will hopefully not require that many resources at all and it has to do with some cousins of this mob here we are going to be working on a mushroom farm and the reason for that being we want to do something with the mushroom island biome that we have out there in the void we can use the mycelium to grow mushrooms on of course but that has the unique possibility of spawning mushrooms and if we limit the amount of area it is possible for passive mobs to spawn in this world it will spawn mushrooms with surprising frequency and i think what we're going to do today is create an automatic stake and leather farm reliable as all heck because the only thing that's going to be able to spawn in that mushroom island biome will be mushrooms so let's slay this cow first and foremost <laughs> grab what steak we can because we may be needing some of that in the near future and let's get right to it now one of the best things about this farm of course is that it doesn't really require all that many resources in fact it's going to be pretty straightforward all we need is a bunch of dirt which we will be able to farm back at the central island thanks to composters or just using the uh, coarse dirt from gravel and dirt trick the main thing we need really is a couple of samples of mycelium and for that luckily i have a silk touch axe already without that of course it would simply be a case of doing what we did before and building a kind of staircase for the mycelium to reach the bottom of the world but we are going to be requiring a couple of platforms here at the bottom of the world and using mycelium to spread outwards from those platforms is going to be ideal so let's grab a couple of samples of mycelium and then we can do what we want with the rest of the surface here in fact i think what i will do is take up all these mushrooms bring them back to the central island where we can farm a couple of giant mushrooms if we want to and let's remove as much of this mycelium as i dare to right now grab as much of this as we can for preservation purposes and then that's going to allow us to continue to use it in future and as you can see one block has already spread downwards to the exposed dirt which means we don't have to worry too much about it disappearing from this island entirely but this island will have to be taken down in the course of this episode because we need as much space as possible down below and we need to track as we have done in previous biomes track the outline of this mushroom fields biome we find ourselves in to discover what the maximum spawnable radius is going to be for our mushroom cows because everything we do after that point hinges on that land so to make this farm as efficient as possible we of course want to make sure it is at the level of the void or roughly y1 so we're going to create a column of cobblestone heading all the way down here in much the same way as we have done in the rest of the series a column of lava first and then add a column of water afterwards that will convert all of the adjoining lava into cobblestone now hopefully this shouldn't have any impact on the lava source but we all know that all we need to do is destroy a wither to get another one of those and that is easier than it sounds considering the methods we have used in the past so hopefully we should just wait for this to head all the way down to void level and we should be right as rain okay i think that's all good now let's play 
place in our bucket of water and yes there we go reliably old faithful <laughs> never lets us down all right let's pick up that bucket of lava and return it to the central island no need to fight the wither for us and we'll just wait for that lava to despawn and take out the water as well while we are at it though i did bring a bunch of cobblestone with me for a reason i can swim my way down here like just get a little bit out of the water stream there so we can place a block right down here at the bottom of the world where the void starts let's put one there and then let's swim our way back up so we know we have a platform down here that we can start on and i should hopefully be able to land on that with my elytra and my fireworks so i don't need to worry too much about swimming back down here we can take the water out and then just land down there in a second in the meantime you may be wondering what we're planning on doing with this which was my previous passive mob spawning platform and as you can see it has done a pretty good job of doing that there are even a couple of animals that have made their way into the pen with the villagers which is kind of great don't know if any of those in there are shepherds but the presence of sheep certainly isn't a problem for them we have a couple of pigs and a chicken or two here and there chickens of course being much more easy to reproduce because you just have to collect their eggs and spam them any time you want more but i have to say i don't want to get rid of this little spoon shape thing of land over here with the uh, the grass on it because it took so much effort to get it down here in the first place and it feels like part of the series at this point however I do want to make sure it is spawn proof in the event that it's going to interfere with the mycelium island that we're going to be building out there in the void. So I think instead what we are going to do is coat this entire thing in glass to make it spawn proof because that should prevent any of the grass from reverting back into dirt, which means we preserve the grass and don't have to wait for it to spread if we want to bring that back in future but this will still ultimately make it spawn proof and we can still leave the torches and stuff on here as well so it has adequate light and you could do something like this with slabs as well but i'm fairly certain slabs would block light to the grass reverting it back into dirt and that's not what we want covering the grass here with glass which is something i've had to just do multiple takes of because i can't say that i get very tongue-tied when i say it covering the grass here with glass will allow it to remain grass which is ideal really and it also allows us to put torches on the top here if we want to not that we need it for spawning purposes or anything nothing should be able to spawn on the glass anyway but it will mean that the whole thing stays lit up nicely time for phase two to begin and the first thing i'm going to do is drop off this and then glide downwards i'm basically head first into this uh column of cobblestone and if i'm horizontal like this my elytra will allow me to descend at a very gradual rate meaning i should hopefully land on that block low down in the void without incident and of course if i don't there we go made it <laughs> it was kind of glitched out there a little bit but if i didn't i of course had my uh rockets on my hotbar for a moment's notice now let's trace out the outline of this mushroom fields island and the best part about this is we don't even need to worry about lighting because there is no mob spawning in mushroom fields especially if we're down below the level of sea level phantoms won't even spawn here which is the biggest problem with mobs on mushroom islands in general so we've got all the mycelium here let's expand this outwards a little bit and let's see if we can trace the outline of this mushroom fields biome in its entirety using dirt blocks and that is the that the mycelium is spreading and there is really not a huge amount of area to work with here but it will be enough for the farm i have in mind so what we're going to do is head back up to the top of the world there and take down anything that is over the top of this island because i think much like the passive mob spawning platform we had over there any blocks that are blocking total sky access to any of these blocks will mean they are not spawnable blocks for passive mobs which includes the mushrooms that we plan on cultivating here so i'm going to head up to the top of the world here and from here we're going to take down all of the blocks of the original mycelium island and unfortunately this is going to have to include a lot of the blocks of the walkway here but like with the grass over there i'm fairly certain that placing glass blocks above this will not block sky access so it should be possible to just get all of these blocks covered with something that is a little bit more transparent like glass and we shouldn't have any problems with the cows spawning down there if we do of course we can just adjust the way this is to uh, have the walkways kind of pass around everything and we might end up doing this with a, um, a nether portal or something anyway so not going to be a huge problem 
And eventually we might end up putting together a more comprehensive nether portal network for this, so that's going to be less of a problem. Now hopefully I should be able to, whoop, yep, there we go, a little bit dicey there, but should be able to take down this column of cobblestone that we put here in the first place. And with the last few blocks gone away, there we go, we have ourselves a completely clear, apart from, I guess, that T-junction in the sky, but that's only a few blocks there, a completely clear mushroom island spawn, which should hopefully in the fullness of time, start to produce some mushroom cows for us. There we go, that's that section. All of the blocks that were covering this mushroom island are now replaced with glass, and hopefully we should start to see some mushroom cows spawning down there. I might have to see if we can get rid of some of the passive mobs that have been around here as well. Much as I want to keep them, I think with them being loaded in the render distance, it is taking up the passive mob cap a little bit with the chickens and the sheep and everything being here. And I don't need to worry too much about gathering wool in large numbers. And if we wanted to, we could always transport some sheep over to the nether and start a wool farm there. And that would mean it would only load in when the nether was loaded in. We could also do the same with mob spawns like the mushroom cows over there. And that may end up being one of the ways we deal with the large quantities of them that are going to spawn here. But in the meantime, I think what we're going to do is just take out the sheep, the chickens, and the pigs that are down here, meaning that the passive mob cap will be a little bit clearer. I think I also have a couple of chickens wandering around this island from eggs that I have carelessly thrown around here and there. And once we've done that, we should be able to clear that out and hopefully we'll start to see some mushroom cows spawning out there on the mycelium island. That means some careful removal of the sheep around here without harming the villagers in any way. Don't want to end up accidentally attacking them with the sweep attack on this sword. But it looks like those are taken care of. Now we just need to take out this pig. This pig over here will probably go into the void there. That sheep and the chickens will probably just get shot quickly with some arrows. One... And two. Oh, I <laughs> overshot that one a little bit. There we go. All right. Now that should be the passive mob cap more or less clear. Give or take anything that's up there on that island. And hopefully we should start to see the mushroom cows spawning over here when we get the chance. Yes, there they are. No sooner had I removed those other animals from the mob cap than the mushrooms made their appearance. Great stuff. Now the question remains, how exactly are we going to collect these mushroom cows in an area where they can all die easily. Now, there are a couple of ways we can do this, but having built this entire island at y equals one, there isn't really an easy way to create a collection system. Much like in the husk farm over there and the slime farm over there, we would need to have hoppers at the level of the void, which makes it kind of difficult to transport the cows on top of them and have them die easily. What I think we should do, and it's varied in its approach a couple of times, I was thinking about maybe doing a Vindicator-powered farm. What I think we're going to do is transport these cows into the nether, because the nether actually has some interesting properties regarding the linkage of portals, and we should hopefully be able to set them up in a place where they can end up on campfires or magma blocks, or even into the waiting axe-filled arms of a Vindicator via a nether portal and it can be at whatever height we want as long as we link the portal up correctly. So I'm going to give that a shot. We are going to try our best to create a giant nether portal here that the mushroom cows are going to be washed into and from there they should make their way into a killing mechanism in the nether. So uh, let's get to work. So after a little bit of dying over and over again, because that's how I farm obsidian, I broke all of the nether portals that were close to the, my central one in the nether and just ended up flinging myself into the void over and over again with all my stuff in the chest, managed to farm myself over a stack of obsidian, and we now have a nether portal set up down there on this island. And I'll show you in a second where that one is going to come out. We first need to light up a couple of these portals because they are ultimately what the mushroom cows are going to be fed into. So by lighting this up and having water streams come out to propel the cows into this collection area, we're going to have them go through to the nether. And I actually need to go and light the nether portal on the opposite side, which I've set up in advance with a quick collection area and hopefully these portals should link up okay. So stepping through this portal to the portal on the other side we now have a connection to the nether and this is where they're going to come out and each of the cows in the portal should hopefully either be pushed out or make their way out naturally. We might have to put a couple of blocks that they could in theory pathfind to to make sure that there would be an area for them to step out of the portal trying to get to another block and we're going to cover this 
area of hoppers in campfires and that should allow the mushroom cows to burn up they may even be cooked by taking fire damage from the campfires and hopefully that will lead to a bunch of steak and a bunch of leather ending up in this chest. Now the problem with this of course is we need to have a way of propelling them into the portal on the opposite side which is just going to be a set of water streams on a timer and we will need to load the nether in for them all to take damage and be cooked. So anytime we load in the nether we are going to find ourselves with a ton of mushrooms over here getting roasted over an open fire and hopefully that should be pretty much everything we need to do aside from of course installing the water streams and making sure the cows cannot escape. So halfway through assembling the redstone components which is basically just going to be a bunch of dispensers hooked up to a timer dispensing water streams that will wash the cows towards the portal I went to get myself some more fireworks and that involved just grabbing a bunch of paper from the sugarcane farm we're going to make a bunch of fireworks like so but I realized that my my sugarcane farm has a bunch of eggs in the chest and then I realized there is a chicken in the farm. <laughs> I don't know how it's got in there. And that may be where it ended up after I was talking about the chicken earlier that was just wandering around this island. But a chicken has made its way into my sugarcane farm. And basically every time this collects, chances are there is an egg inside of there. And we have three stacks of eggs along with all of these sugarcane. That, that, is, that is hilarious. I have no idea the chicken was in there. And it was the most bizarre moment to just open this chest and go, wait a minute. Has my sugarcane farm been producing eggs this entire time? Turns out, yeah, maybe it has. Okay, well, we should be able to set up the water streams now. We just need to throw a bunch of dispensers in a line in front of this portal. And of course, water will break nether portals if it flows into it. Or at least I think it does. Or maybe it's just if you end up with flowing water placed in the portal frame, like if a player places it manually. But either way, we need to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, and that block there is where these dispensers are going to go. So we are limiting the spawnable space of this Mushroom Island to a small area that we can control. So the outer boundaries of this are not super necessary. If we wanted to use the entire surface area of the farm, of course, we could set up a second layer of dirt here so that the water would flow down from a ridge and along. But I think it might be worth it just to contain this to a relatively small area, and that will allow more mushrooms just to spawn in a single place and we can make the farm a little bit faster don't have to wait for the flowing water that way but everything should now be in position there and we can start spawn proofing the rest of this area of the farm including i guess making sure that the mushrooms who spawn in here can't escape by placing another row of slabs like so and there you go that guy there can't walk out at all as with the grass area over there i am covering the rest of this island in glass which is gonna look a little bit strange i will admit but it's kind of nice to have the outline of the mushroom island visible here in case we want to do anything different with this later and hopefully <laughs> hopefully the dispenser water streams will push any zombie pigmen who wander out of the portal back into the portal as well where they may or may not be roasted on the opposite side. Who knows? I don't think the zombie pigmen are going to take damage from the campfires, but hopefully they should just despawn when we leave the nether or move around in the nether as part of that uh, hostile mob camp anyway. The idea here is that we're flushing out this platform somewhat frequently so that any of the mushrooms that go through the portal are immediately removed from the passive mob cap for this area and it should be quite a straightforward demonstration for me to just fly up into the air for a second and yep there we go we get one mushroom cow spawning down there automatically now i wonder if maybe leaving the rest of this mycelium around here it's still checking it to see if a mushroom could spawn there so maybe having this mycelium available on this platform is perhaps not the best idea after all and maybe it would be better just to cover all of the dirt in slabs for the time being and have it all revert back into dirt because anything that is not a mycelium block on this island should not be spawnable for mushroom cows i'm pretty sure they can only spawn on mycelium within a mushroom field biome or maybe it's just that the game hasn't made multiple spawning attempts yet, but either way, that mushroom would end up getting washed into the nether portal by the water streams when they activate, and then that would clear out the mob camp for this area, allowing more mushrooms to spawn, and once we go through to the nether, they should all be there waiting to get roasted. Yep, as we step through to the opposite side, you can see that the mushrooms have made it through this portal, but unfortunately it doesn't seem like they want to step out onto the campfires. That is most likely because they cannot detect any solid blocks around here that they could attempt to pathfind to. So it looks like we're probably going to have to go with plan B and create a large area 
of blocks somewhere nearby. Now that should be easy enough. It should be something that we can do just with a large area of cobblestone or, you know, we could make it grass or dirt or something like that that they might be more likely to pathfind to. But I have a feeling just any solid block will do. And then we just have to make sure it is not spawnable. So we should be able to do something with slabs or just a large area of blocks that they will try and pathfind to and make sure it is spawn proofed against any zombie pigmen because we don't really want them wandering freely around the nether. Yeah, and no sooner have I finished placing in a bunch of blocks over here, but one of the mushrooms has stepped out of the portal onto the campfires. So here's hoping that if we create a large enough area of blocks here, the other mushrooms should end up following suit. And as you can see, already got a fair amount of beef and leather in this chest, so it looks like the system may be working. I have just seen something I did not expect to see, and <laughs> it's a little bit of a concern. I think I may have just seen a slime spawn here. I'm not entirely certain I did. Let's find out, I guess. So here is our standard Etho Hopper clock. That's the clock we're going to be taking a redstone signal from, and every time that clock shifts, it's going to power all of these dispensers at once, thanks to a redstone line we're going to put in behind here. Now, of course, these blocks would not be spawnable anyway with the redstone dust on them, but it's going to be the case that with this being a mushroom island, nothing should be able to spawn on them anyway, so we won't have anything else here taking up either the passive or hopefully the hostile mob cap. Now, we just need to fill these dispensers with water, and the water streams should carry any mobs, yes, any mobs, looking at you, Mr. Zombie Pigman, <laughs> into the nether portal, and hopefully then we will start to see these things come together. So I've disabled the hopper clock for a second just so we can put all of the buckets in here without us having to worry about the dispensers firing and the water buckets coming out at uneven times. But now when we click that redstone dust into place, we should start to see this shift and all of the water streams propel the mushroom into the portal, giving it ample time to wash all of the mobs in there. The hopper clock shifts one more time, 32 items in here, and we can probably dial in the timings a little bit because that's plenty of time then we should give them a little bit of adequate time to spawn here, which will happen if I'm away from the farm. That should be long enough. Once again, it can dial the time in a little bit. And then the dispenser should activate again and all of the water streams will start flowing once more. So let me stand up here on the little glass bridge, which also doubles as an observation platform for the farm now. <laughs> and if we build an observation platform at a slightly safer height for phantom spawns, we could, in theory, AFK here indefinitely. But let's see if we get any mushroom cows spawning in the meantime. Looks like maybe we are not. So that's making me think maybe we should have fewer mycelium blocks around the perimeter of the farm because they may still be trying to spawn mushrooms and failing. Either that or that chicken inside my sugarcane farm is still taking up the passive mob cap somehow. But yeah, we should be seeing mushrooms spawning on this platform, which is definitely making me think we should probably just slab over the rest of the island, converting it all back into dirt where it won't try and spawn mushrooms. That's kind of a shame, but I guess that's the way these things go sometimes. There we go. We're starting to see some spawns now, and I have also lengthened the amount of time it takes for the dispensers to come on. We could work on potentially doing a two-stage clock for this so the dispenser spends less time dispensing water and more time relaxing and letting the mushrooms spawn but i have a feeling we can wait around for a little while longer and see how many mushrooms end up spawning inside the system i'm gonna stand here for a little while maybe with a block or two over my head to make sure phantoms don't spawn and then we'll head over to the nether and we'll see what exactly gets caught in our little net Hey folks, welcome back. And so having had this farm under observation while I edited together the rest of the video, I have come to a couple of conclusions and done a little bit more research. And the first conclusion I came to was that there were very few mobs spawning here at night, which is why I've actually gone ahead and added in a couple more blocks of glowstone. You can just about see one right there where my crosshair is. There's also one at the corners and that allows the cows to spawn here during the night as well. It turns out, having done a little bit more research about mob spawning, that it doesn't seem like they need direct sky access. They actually just need a light level of above nine and I think the reason I was thinking they needed direct sky access was because people say that the highest block in the world is the one that it checks first for mob spawns. And so if you have a lower block in the world, then that means typically you're going to get slightly faster mob spawns because it doesn't have anything to check above that, which is why we haven't made this 
a layered platform farm to begin with, but it is entirely possible that you could set up layer upon layer of this farm if you wanted a bunch of mushrooms spawning in the same island space. However, now we have got this all set up, it does seem like we are getting a fair amount of spawns. I've also lengthened the timer a little bit, and I think I am probably going to set it up so that it has a shorter pulse for the water and a longer pulse just for the empty mycelium to spawn because we are getting pack spawns of one or two here and there and then an additional three or four might join them in a second spawning attempt and sometimes it just takes a while. Sometimes we don't see any spawns at all like right now when we're really not seeing anything between cycles of the water but then occasionally we would get like five or six cows all going through at once so it's entirely possible that we might get a couple of spawn cycles where it's just going to be luck of the draw whether we get anything or not but realistically we should be seeing a decent turnover for this farm there we go we got a series of spawns right there we got four cows all at once those are going to get washed into the portal in just a second we'll see if any more spawn in the meantime so if i wanted to set up multiple platforms for this farm what we could do is just increase the height of the nether portal and have them all wash into the portal because they don't drop or anything once they go into the portal frame they basically just disappear as soon as they make contact with those portal blocks i think this farm has been running for long enough though i set myself up a little phantom guard here just to make sure that there wasn't going to be anything spawning above me while we afk'd at this farm and i also reduced my render distance just in case the rendering of the central island was causing any kind of issues but i can increase that back to 24 chunks which is what i usually play at in these single player worlds let's head through to the nether and let's see how much steak we get yep okay it looks like we have a lot of mushrooms hanging out in the portal right now and hopefully a few of those will have made their way onto the fire wow look at that that's not looking too bad for only a and I, I guess probably about half an hour's afk session that's two stacks of steak and change we got a stack of leather and <laughs> actually a half decent slime farm out of this as well that is really not too bad and i imagine there are many ways we could optimize the rates of this it looks like there are some cows still hanging out in the portal but hopefully they should path find their way towards this set of blocks and we could do a lot to make this farm look a little bit prettier but for practical purposes it is all there and hopefully we should start to see these mobs wander out of the portal as well so really not too bad for an early mushroom farm experiment i wonder if we could do a little bit more to this in future episodes but for now folks i think that is where we're going to wrap up this episode of the skyblock survival guide i hope you enjoyed it and if you have don't forget to leave a like on it for me subscribe if you want to see more and i'll see you guys soon take care bye for now